So in this video we are going to analyze the national movements which took place between 1919 to 1934. We will be starting with the non-cooperation movement followed by civil disobedience movement and these two important event which are Gandhi Irvin Pact and second round table conference of 1931. So getting started with the non-cooperation movement and its causes the first among all is the Rollet Act of 1919. In February 1919 Justice Sidney Rollet introduced two bills and these two bills were popularly termed as black bills because on the basis of these bills the police could now search any place or arrest any person on bare suspicion without issuing any kind of warrant that particular person would be kept in police custody without trial for an indefinite period of time so these bills were described as no dalil and no wakil the actual purpose of this act of these bills was to curb the growing nationalism in india as you can see these bills are clearly violating the individual liberty and freedom of speech so this was also one of the reason behind launch of non cooperation movement now coming to the second reason that was jallianwala bag tragedy what happened basically was an amritsar two prominent leaders namely dr satpal and dr saifuddin kichlu were arrested in 1919 and deported from amritsar the irritated mob marched towards the residence of deputy commissioner to protest against the arrest of these two leaders Then the police started firing at the mob and angry mob attacked the town hall and local post office. The city was then handed over to General Dyer who prohibited public meetings and applied martial law in Amritsar. Next day a large crowd of people gathered at the Jallianwala Bagh to attend a public meeting over release of these two leaders. Then General Dyer without issuing warning to the unarmed crowd told his troops to fire upon the mob. and the shooting continued for 10 minutes until the police ran out of ammunition and hundreds of people died on the spot in the response rabindranath tagore in protest gave up his title of knighthood and whole nation was basically agitated over this issue so brutality at jallianwala bag stunned the entire nation so this was also one of the reason behind launch of non cooperation movement now coming to the next reason this was the khilafat movement turkey entered the first world war as an ally of germany against the britain The Sultan of Turkey was the caliph or khalifa which was the religious head of entire muslim world this is why the indian muslims also had sympathy for the caliph or khalifa but at the end of first world war a large portion of turkish empire or ottoman empire came under the control of france and england and hence the muslims in india started the khilafat movement to revive the lost glory and restore the territories of khalifa under the leadership of ali brothers shaukat ali and mohammad ali Then Gandhi ji advised the Khilafat Committee to adopt a policy of non-cooperation with the government and he was prepared to start non-cooperation movement in the support of Khilafat demands to unite Hindus and Muslims of India. So these were important reasons behind the launch of non-cooperation movement. Now we will analyze the course of event now we will analyze the program of non-cooperation movement. Now we will look at the program of non-cooperation movement. The program of non-cooperation movement was of two types negative as well as positive. The negative aspect of the non-cooperation movement was the boycott of the government schools, boycott of law courts, boycott of British goods, legislative council and surrender of titles and honorary posts. As per the positive aspects of the non-cooperation movement, we saw the Hindu-Muslim unity, promotion of swadeshi removal of untouchability and the banning of intoxicated drinks now we will see the suspension of non cooperation movement why this movement had to stop so the most important incident in this is the chori chora incident under this what happened a police officer was beaten by some volunteers picketing a liquor shop the angry crowd set fire to the local police station which had 22 policemen inside it gandhi ji decided to withdraw the movement as he was shocked seeing the movement becoming violent gandhi ji's idea was never of violence thus he revoked this non cooperation movement you can see an image here which describes the chori chora incidents now we will look at the impact of non cooperation movement it demonstrated the support of the mass that is the peasants students workers lawyers women oppressed shopkeepers artisans etc it instilled confidence among the masses the hindu muslim unity was there as an impact of non cooperation movement promotion of social reforms and promotion of khadi was there undermining the prestige of the british government 
This also happened as an impact of non-cooperation movement. The Congress aimed at attaining Swaraj within the British Empire. The change of Congress character. The spread of nationalism was there and the formation of Swaraj party in March 1923. So that was it in this video. Thank you. Now continuing our lecture on the national movements which took place between 1919 to 1934. We are now heading towards the causes of civil disobedience movement. So first of all, we will analyze first cause which is reaction towards Simon Commission. This Simon Commission was sent to India in November 1921 to decide the political future of India. And the Simon Commission was a committee that was made up of seven members which was headed by Sir John Simon. The commission was to examine the working of the reforms introduced in India by the Government of India Act of 1919 which was also known as Montago Games for Reforms. It was also there to suggest further constitutional reforms. But why it was opposed? Because this was an all-white commission. There was no Indian member in it. So this was the very fact which became the reason behind its opposition. So therefore, most of the political parties of India like Indian National Congress, Muslim League, Hindu Mahasabha, etc. decided to boycott this Simon Commission because they said that how can you decide our future without our intermission? This Simon Commission had no Indian member in this, be it from Indian National Congress or Muslim League or any other parties. So when Simon and his team landed at Mumbai, all the major cities and towns in India observed a complete hartal on that day. Black flags with the slogan Go Back Simon was shown to the commission and it was only during this protest movement Lala Lajpatrai died due to the Lati charge and, and this incident shocked the Indians and motivated them to take action and in this way this also became one of the reason behind launch of civil disobedience movement. Now coming to the next reason that was of demand for Purn Swaraj. In December 1929 the Congress held its session at Lahore which was presided by Jawaharlal Nehru, young Congress leader and he was also made the president of Congress then. The Congress declared that Poon Swaraj or complete independence should be our goal. Earlier it was said that we can compromise with dominant status. But in that session, Congress declared that we do not want anything less than Poon Swaraj or complete independence. So Congress also passed a resolution for boycotting the first roundtable conference and they decided to launch a civil disobedience movement. And they also said that on 26 January 1930, Poon Swaraj Divas was to be observed all over India and this was successfully observed by them. So these two were one of the important reasons and we will now learn how this movement started. So this civil disobedience movement started with the Dandi March. Dandi March was started by Gandhiji on 12th March 1930. He started this march along with a band of 78 followers. You can see here Gandhiji marching towards Dandi with his followers. They started their march from Sabarwati Ashram Ahmedabad and reached Dandi in April on the Gujarat sea coast to violate the salt law by collecting salt from beach. Gandhiji selected salt law to be defied because salt tax affected all sections of society and all the households of India, especially the poor. So Gandhiji inaugurated the civil disobedience movement by picking up a handful of salt and disobeying the salt law of British colonialism. So in that way, Dandi March became one of the major breakthrough of civil disobedience movement. Now we will see the course of event of civil disobedience movement. So they can be summed up as salt law was defied all across the country. Here you can say Gandhiji picking up salt and violating the salt law. So there was a defense of salt law across the country. Foreign goods were boycotted and they were burnt in the uh, collective bonfire. Liquor was also boycotted. Land revenue was not paid by the peasants to colonial administration. So this was a series of events during the civil disobedience movement. Now we will analyze the impacts of civil disobedience movement. What was the significance of this movement? So it created a political consciousness among Indian people and also spread the feeling of Poon Swaraj. It made people understand the significance of principle of non-violence because it was so widely performed. It was also known for the participation of women in that movement. The British government was convinced that bold constitutional reforms were now required and it was also active now to take charge. The movement changed the social life of the poor and the oppressed and it also widened the base of freedom of struggle because people from many sections joined this particular movement. So these all were the impact of civil disobedience movement. It concluded with a pact named as Gandhi Irwin Pact. It was signed between Gandhiji and the then Viceroy of India, Lord Irwin. We are going to analyze the Gandhi Irwin Pact in the next slide. Now we will look at the Gandhi Irwin Pact. The Gandhi Irwin Pact was signed on March 
फिफ्थ नाइनटीन बिटवीन लॉर्ड इरविन एंड महात्मा गांधी लॉर्ड इरविन अग्रीड दैट टू सर्टन पॉइंट्स इन द गांधी इरविन पैक्ट He agreed to release all the satyagrahis who remained non-violent through the movement to return the confiscated property of the satyagrahis. He agreed to permit peaceful picketing of liquor shops and foreign clothes shops to allow people living near the coastal areas to manufacture salt. So after the non-cooperation movement what happened uh, it was considered that the salt law was abolished but the salt law was not abolished now the government allowed the people to manufacture salt in their region as the result gandhi ji agreed to certain points which were to attend second round table conference and to withdraw the civil disobedience movement now we will see the second round table conference The main features of second round table conference was that it was attended by Gandhi ji. The conference discussed the communal questions and the representation of minorities like Sikh and Indian Christian in the legislature. Gandhi ji returned to India without any fruitful conclusion regarding the political future of India. The civil disobedience movement was resumed after this and this civil disobedience movement was a personal civil disobedience movement which did not include the masses. Why did it fail? Why the second round table conference had no conclusion? So, the Gandhi ji wanted the Indian National Congress to represent the whole India but this was opposed by Muslim League. representative of the princely states and b r ambedkar as all of these wanted their own electorate for their separate representation so that was it in this video thank you